Well, thank God at least one race this weekend in Martinsville didn't suck. Hi, hi, hi. Push it, push it, push it, push it. Check your bike. Hell yeah! Woo! One hell of a job, man. One hell of a job. Woo! Yeah! Mandy Series champion right here. Nice work, boss. Hell yeah, guys! That's awesome! Let's drink the beer. What do you think, Cole? I'm fucking ready. What? Too soon? I mean, be honest. Come on now. Welcome back on into the Pit Pass, your personal pass for the NASCAR Xfinity Series. I'm Alan Bailey. Oh, fun race at Martinsville over the weekend. Whenever the Xfinity Series goes to a short track for some reason, it's really, 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 really good racing. And we saw that this weekend, thank God, from at least one series at Martinsville over the weekend. We're going to go ahead and talk about Eric Amarola's victory. But before we get on into it, make sure that you mash that subscribe button so that you come back for the next video. And of course, log on to arnrace.com for the latest motorsports news. ARN the Motorsports Authority. I know. I've given Eric Amarola so much crap on this program and on Shifting Gears, but you know what? Good for him. Sincerely, this is awesome for him. He's a guy who, frankly, has never been in the right position at the right time and, frankly, wore out the time on his time in the Cup Series, I think. And... I'm really glad that he is racing in the NASCAR Xfinity Series because I still think he is a good driver. Not a great driver, not necessarily a Cup Series driver, but a driver who can obviously get wins in the NASCAR Xfinity Series. And I would argue, probably contend for a championship if given the opportunity. Joe Gibbs Racing, hint, hint, hint. I'm honestly really happy for the guy because his kids were there, his family was there, they got to enjoy the moment with him, and they will remember those core memories because of the win this weekend, and that means so much to Eric Amarola. That is pretty damn cool. I'm really glad he did it. Fifth win in the NASCAR Xfinity Series, technically his fourth, I guess, kind of, sort of, depending on how you look at his first with Joe Gibbs Racing, but I saw a lot of people in the media going, oh... Eric Amarola finally got his first Xfinity Series win. Were you guys not paying attention? This is technically on paper his fifth, but in reality his fourth. He did get the Xfinity Series win at Sonoma last year. I I'm just saying, Eric's been winning in the Xfinity Series before. I hope this means we're going to see Eric Amarola in more Xfinity Series races, sincerely. Because if he were running the full schedule right now, he'd be in the playoffs. And I think Joe Gibbs Racing is noticing that and going... <sighs> maybe we can find, you know, a seat for him. Huh? You know, that kid in the 81 is probably going to be driving the 19 next year. Huh? How about we put that Eric Amarola in the 81 next year full time? <laughs> I'm just saying, that's the obvious choice. It's clear Martin Trix Jr. is on his way out the door, whether that's at the end of 2024 or 2025. But when Martin Trix Jr. steps out of the 19, who's going to step in? Probably Chandler Smith, who's driving the 81 full-time right now. Once he moves up to Cup, guess what? Eric Amarola can move into that 81. I'm just saying, Joe Gibbs Racing, make this happen because this is a guy who can win you a championship or at least get you to the Final Four and get you a shot at the championship. And that's what Joe Gibbs Racing needs right now. Yeah, you've got Sheldon Creed there. Yes, you've got a very good development pool of drivers in a rotation in that 20 car. I'm not taking away from them. I'm just saying, Eric Amarola, Rola is another bullet in the chamber for you guys. Utilize him. Speaking of Chandler Smith, coming home second out there at Martinsville this weekend. Extends his point lead, plus 35 right now over Cole Custard. Hey man, this, this kid is a contender for the title, clearly, and I think he's going to be in the 19 when Martin Truex Jr. retires. We're going to have to wait to see. Like I mentioned, uh, Cole Custard coming home eighth out at Martinsville, second in the point standings right now, 35 out. He is quietly having a very consistent year, and he's up to second right now. You got to start paying attention to the defending champ because he is one of the guys you're going to have to beat in order to win this championship. Massive, massive shout out to Carson Quaffle in his Xfinity Series debut for Junior Motorsports in the 88, brings it home fourth. Damn. Like, that is impressive because this track especially, you have to race the track in order to just survive it, but you need to try not to run over by the competition who, frankly, is going to try to rub you the wrong way to test you because you're a rookie. And this guy didn't necessarily come into this race with a bullet painted on his back, but because he's a rookie... He wasn't exactly given courtesies that other drivers are given on the racetrack, and he fought through those and came home fourth. 
That is extraordinarily impressive. Keep an eye on this kid because he might be the future of driver development over there at Junior Motorsports. Mr. Jesse Love in the number two for RCR coming up ninth moves, uh, stays fourth in the point standings, I should say. 76 markers back. Again, quietly consistent day. When this guy honestly gets another year or so under his belt, he's going to be running top five. He's going to be winning 10, 15 races a year. I think that's where Jesse Love is going. And I've given this guy so much crap on this show. And you know what? Finally, he can say I was wrong. He can say it. He can. And I'll happily admit it. Josh Williams in the 11 for colleague coming home 10th. That a boy. He, he's he got the talent, y'all. He just has been beating himself. And I got to give him props here. I really do. I've given him a lot of crap for not living up to his potential and not showing what he can do in this car. And he finally did that a little bit this weekend. And is this a start of, you know, him rattling off a bunch of top 10s and really moving into a playoff contender spot? I don't know necessarily. He's 23rd in the points, 212 out. But you know what? A single victory definitely would erase that, and he'd be locked into the postseason. It could happen. Is it likely? Not really, but it could happen. And SVG going to Martinsville, man. I wonder how many hot dogs he had. He came home 11, just shy of a top 10, 13th in the points, 146 points out at the moment respectable day whenever you're a rookie and you come into martinsville and you leave without really making a whole lot of waves it was a good day and miss haley deegan coming home 18th 25th in the point standings 226 points out listen she just got run over there's footage on her uh youtube channel of this race vlog where she just flat out got run over like there's there's no way around that and her, she had a lot of damage on the car because of that but you know what battling back for a top 20 with a car that looked like that that's 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 gutsy man you got to give props to this woman because she went out there and she put her elbows up and she came home with a respectable finish under the circumstances. And of course, once again, stop me if you've heard this, Fox misses another wreck. I know, crazy. We're at a point where it's not even every weekend they're missing a wreck or they're missing the big moment that we should be seeing on TV. It's every damn race at this point. It's just so sad. It is such a disappointment that Fox cannot put on a quality broadcast and can't cover this event properly. They have a massive TV contract, so I know they have to sell 10 bajillion spots in order to justify their large bonuses at the end of the year to the executives, but I don't care. Do not sacrifice your product just so that these bozos in the boardroom can go ahead and get a bonus. It's just stupid. Will anything change? No. And I'm honestly blue in the face from yelling at Fox executives for being the morons they are. They honestly aren't listening or paying attention because why would they? They're too busy counting those large bonuses. So let them count it. I'm just going to go ahead and stop watching Fox. That's how we're really going to send a message to Fox. Just go ahead and not watch the Fox broadcast. Watch those ratings tank. Then they're going to get nervous. Then they're going to make some changes. Then they're going to fire some executives in order to make changes. I'm very curious to see what Texas is going to look like this weekend because in the Cup Series, thank God, it's it's something besides a short track. The trucks are going to be the trucks, but the Xfinity car is really the good benchmark because they're clearly the series to watch right now. They hands down have the best racing, and it's great, honestly. But this racetrack is problematic, and however well or poorly this race is will really determine where texas motor speedway is as a racetrack don't look at the truck series do not look at the quality of the cup race look at the quality of the xfinity race this saturday at 1 30 p.m eastern on fs1 this is really going to determine kind of where this racetrack is and what potentially needs to be done if the xfinity cars go out there and put on a decent show then the case could be made to leave it alone. I'm just saying it could be there. We're going to find out Saturday. We're going to go ahead and end the show this way. I want to go ahead and send our condolences to everybody at the Labonte family. Uh, Bobby Labonte and Terry Labonte, past NASCAR Cup Series champs, uh, both uh, made the announcement this week on their social media that unfortunately their father, Bob Labonte, passed away this week. Bobby Labonte posted on his Twitter account, This week, Terry and I lost our dad. To many of you who knew him around the garage, you know he was larger than life. 
To us, he was our dad and also a crew chief, a mentor, our biggest fan, our motivation at times, and our hero. He and our mom dedicated their lives to our racing careers and to our family. We are deeply saddened by the loss of our dad, although we know he's in a far better place. We'd like to thank everyone for their support during this difficult time. Everyone at the Pit Pass, Shifting Gears, and ARN all send our condolences to the entire Labonte family. For the Pit Pass, I'm Alan Bailey. We'll see you at the track.